Have you ever sat around and thought about who the person was that decided that the 1st of January or January 1 would be the new year, the start of a brand new year for the world? If you know anything about history and the people who've run our world, you know that they don't pick dates just because. There's nothing random. There are no coincidence. Well, what if I told you that the real new year was during Easter. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, a very special thank you to all of our patrons. If you would like to join our patron program, there is a link down in the description box below. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we are gonna be talking about the vernal equinox. Now, normally on Monday, we do a Mystery Monday, and we're not doing that today. We're getting a little bit off schedule because of the holiday and because of a lot of fun and exciting things that are coming up on this channel. I do hope that everybody watching had a wonderful holiday weekend. I hope last week for anybody celebrating Passover or Easter or Resurrection Day, as it's called, and a lot of Christian churches now had a wonderful time with their friends and family. Our story today is a bit of a follow-up to the video I released this weekend with our special guest, David Zublick, over the Easter holiday. If you have not seen that video, there will be a link down in the description box below, along with some other videos that are referenced in this story. Now, when I decided to do a story on Easter, I had absolutely no idea that I was going to stumble upon this information regarding the legitimate New Year versus the New Year that we've been taught to celebrate. Now, everything that I covered with David on Saturday are already concepts that I was familiar with within the pagan roots of the Easter holiday. But this idea of our real New Year being during the Easter holiday was something that I was very surprised by. Now apparently the idea of Passover or the Easter celebration this whole week, but they always come together as being the start of a new year is biblical. Apparently you can find references to this in the book of Exodus as well as the book of Deuteronomy. However, in these books, they are referred to by their Hebrew names. The month of April is not called the month of April. Again, it's called by its Hebrew name. So therefore, a lot of us lay people who don't know Hebrew, have not been taught Hebrew, might not have recognized this commandment from the God of Abraham to celebrate the new year around the spring equinox. Now, I know a lot of Christians get very upset when people talk about astrology or the equinoxes that we have during our calendar year. However, from my opinion, as someone who's very open-minded and pretty mystical, the equinoxes, the astrology, it's just like a calendar. It just kind of tells us the movement, the ebb and flow of nature, the cycle of nature, the timeline of nature. In a lot of ways, nature doesn't move on linear time. Instead, nature moves in reciprocal time. And this was something that our ancient ancestors understood and knew. Maybe it's because we live in modern times where we're not as affected by nature as our ancestors were that we've lost connection to the deeper spirituality of nature. For example, we, for the most part, know when things like hurricanes are coming or tornadoes. Yes, again, a lot of these natural disasters do come up and surprise us sometimes, but for the most part, we're able to work with these things versus being surprised by them. This, of course, has everything to do with the evolution of understanding 
from our ancestors, not just our ancestors that have recently passed on, but our ancient ancestors as well, that most of us have lost touch with. Now the vernal equinox happens anywhere between March 19th and March 21st in the Northern Hemisphere. This is the day when the sun crosses over the equator from the Southern Hemisphere back into the Northern Hemisphere, creating equal day and equal night. It is officially the marking of spring. It is also the time when Pisces moves into Aries. This transition from the dark, cold winter into the rebirth of spring is one of the most powerful transitions. If you think about this logically, the idea of birth is a lot more energetically tiring than the idea of death. In a lot of ways, to die, just as nature does in the fall, is a way of letting go. But to create new life and to be born again takes more energy. If you look at this from a human perspective, a human being can die in one second. That's all it takes, one second. But in order for a human to be born, it takes nine months. For our ancient ancestors, this vernal equinox transition from winter to spring was the mark of the new year. And it does make sense. It's the mark of things being reborn, of things renewing themselves, of life returning back to the planet. This is also around the time that Passover is celebrated for our Jewish brothers and sisters, and of course the time of Easter, which is or has its root in pagan celebrations, which we talked about with David, for our Christian brothers and sisters. Now, they mark Easter as the Sunday after the full moon after the vernal equinox. This is why the date of Easter changes every single year. This has a lot to do with our heritage from our ancient ancestors that predate Jesus. So how did the new year get moved to January 1, where nothing in nature is going through an energetic transition, including us? Well, we know that the roots of Christmas are found in the Saturnalian Brotherhood. I will link that video down in the description box below. Well, did you know that New Year also has a connection with the cult of Saturn or the Saturnalian Brotherhood? And this comes from the Roman deity Janus. Now, according to legend and history, Janus was a human being before he became a god. He ended up ruling an area of Italy or the Roman Empire, and he is the one that brought back the god of Saturn. He is also the king who introduced money, the money system, the banking system into the Roman Empire and brought boats over to show them both. We know that boats and maritime law do come from the Canaanites and the Phoenicians. If you've been following along here on this channel and also on the Dark Outpost, we've talked a lot about the Canaanites and the Phoenicians. They went into Carthage and then with the Punic Wars of the Roman Empire, ended up infiltrating the Roman Empire and the Church of Rome and then infiltrating through Constantine, X, Y, and Z, so forth and so forth and so forth. You all know that story. Today, the Canaanites and Phoenicians rule our world. They are our ruling elite. Well, again, the Canaanites and the Phoenicians were known as being really good in boats and in, in, in like an ancient navy. They were merchants where they would sell stuff all over the Mediterranean. And this, of course, is where we get this idea of maritime law or admiral law that we're living under today that we're trying to get out of, the law of the sea versus the law of the land. And so Janus, again, brought back the god of Saturn or the Saturnalian Brotherhood to his area of the Roman Empire. He also introduced this idea of coins and money into this Roman Empire and he also brought in the boating system which again symbolizes maritime law. All things that we recognize in our world today from our ruling elite. 
Well, because Janus was seen as such a good ruler by his people at that time, after he died, he himself became a deity. Now, his deity is shown by having two heads, one facing forward into the future and one looking into the past. The name Janus is also where we get the month January from. Now, Janus is the god of doorways, of entrances, of beginnings and endings. He is also the god of war. And we know the Roman Empire was at war a lot. In fact, the temples built to Janus were only open during times of war. They were closed during times of peace. That gives you more of an idea of the crux of who Janus is as a deity. Now we also get the word janitor from Janus because a janitor is the groundskeeper, the bearer of keys. They hold keys, right? And they kind of manage the doorways of, of buildings. Now the keys that Janus, the god, the deity has on him are said to be the keys that unlock mystical understandings. And these keys and this deity is important to a lot of our secret societies today, allegedly like the Freemasons. Now January 1 and mostly into the month of January was celebrated by the Romans as a feast day for Janus. The Romans would make resolutions and promises for the new beginnings to Janus, a bit like our New Year's resolutions today. By the time the celebrations of Janus came around, the Romans had just finished celebrating the Saturnalian holiday of Christmas, where they had made their human sacrifices and given each other gifts and been drunk and merry, and now they're moving into celebrating Janus, when in life, Janus was the person that brought back the worship of Saturn, which gave way to the Saturnalian Brotherhood shenanigans. And so now they're coming in to recognize and celebrate Janus as the deity who holds the doorway between the past and the future, making these promises to him. They also would sacrifice a ram to Janus. But not only would they sacrifice a ram to Janus, because Janus was the deity who guarded the doorways, Janus would be around for all of their sacrifices, animal or human, because Janus guarded the doorway, he also guarded the other deities as well. If you wanted to get to another deity, you would have to go through Janus first. A bit like when you go into a school or any type of building, you kind of have to go through the doorman or the janitor as well. Now the celebration of Janus was so important that from 153 BC onward, the magistrates in the Roman Republic would take their role in office on January 1. They would offer prayers to Janus on the day of taking office and the priest would bake these breads and these feasts in order to celebrate this deity and prayer for a successful year within the Roman Empire. During this celebration, not only would people be sacrificing rams to Janus, but they would be giving each other figs and honey and coins in order to offer a wish of a sweet or new year, prosperous year to their friends and family. A bit like our celebration today where we have certain foods we eat on the new year in order to offer in prosperity. Even the kiss at midnight in the new year is not only to put a spell out or a wish out for that person to never be alone, but it also was said to ward off evil spirits. All this comes back to this pagan holiday of Janus. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've never really big, been a big New Year's person. It's not like I ever really wanted to party hard on New Year's. I usually, at this point in my life, just go to bed early and wake up on January 1 as if it's another day. And I do feel more of an energy shift coming from the dead of winter into spring. Where I live in the world, it doesn't really get as cold as it does in other places. We don't really get snow. So I'm sure people, our friends watching that live in colder climates, probably experience even more of a transition from the dead of winter into the rebirth of spring. And it is interesting to me that our ancient ancestors before the Roman Empire did celebrate the new year 
during the spring equinox, and it was the Roman celebration of the worship of the deity Janus that forced us into celebrating on January 1. In our celebrations, it forced us energetically into giving this power to this other deity. And so since Janus was the deity or the human being before he became a deity that ushered in this cult of Saturn or cult of Satan, I do have to wonder if this forcing us to forget our roots in our celebration of the new year and spring, especially since it's mentioned in the Old Testament and the Bible, are they trying to trick us into harvesting an energy for a nefarious purpose? Or is this simply an old tradition that got morphed into something new? while we've simply just forgotten the pattern our ancestors followed through nature. Let me know your opinions down in the comment box below. We have a couple of new interviews coming up this week that I'm super excited about. We are going to go into some other topics this week. We're going to pull away from the French royal family for just a little bit. There's some other families that I need to look at and some other concepts that I need to look at before we start to marry them all together to have a deeper understanding of what we know as the Pesor family today. So I'm super excited about the videos we've got coming up for you. Don't forget to join us tomorrow night on David Zublik's channel, The Dark Outpost, as we go through the Apocryphon of John. There will be a Cliff's Notes version of that here on Wednesday. I guess I should end this video by saying Happy New Year to you guys. All right, guys, I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead. The best is yet to come. Thank you again to Josh McKay for doing our music. If you would like to purchase our opening song, there is a link down in the description box below. And thank you again to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys. I will talk to you soon. Bye.